Uh, thanks, Michael, for, uh, for inviting me to speak. Uh, it's a good opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, so I, uh, I, I want to just, well, give a quick, quick primer on data science. Um, the idea is that, uh, I guess, you know, there's a lot of developers in the room. And actually, uh, before the last talk, Michael was asking how many web devs, how many app developers. Uh, he, he didn't ask how many data science people. Yes. One? Okay, that's good. Uh, don't, don't tell them that I'm saying everything wrong. <laughs> and there's at least one data engineer, right, Anne? <laughs> Any other data engineers? Okay, that's good. Also, don't, don't tell them wrong. <laughs> um, so I'm actually not really a developer. <laughs> I've been coding in some form for about 20 years, uh, but I wouldn't really call myself a developer. Uh, I wrote my first unit test like three years ago, uh, <laughs> so it's been, uh, I, I, I come from an academic uh, background and there it's very different, right? You, you code in order to, uh, to, to you know, get something done, solve a, solve a problem, uh, and usually, yeah, I've never heard about uh, testing your, your, your code until yeah, a few years ago. Um, and so what I want to talk about is uh, what, so first uh, give a primer on uh, what data science is, uh, a very general description, uh, a few uh, examples. Um, I'll talk about the standard approach that a lot of data science teams uh, do take, uh, and then the way that, uh, that we can have a, a slightly more developer-based uh, approach. So uh, a lot of people in data science uh, are not from a developer background, right? So uh, a lot of, of people are uh, academics uh, like me, and uh, they, they don't have like very rigorous approaches to uh, the, the coding that they do. They have to do a lot of coding, but they're not very uh, uh, rigorous about it. So um, I want to talk about the, a, a more developer-based uh, approach to data science. Uh, and then there's also a, a, a kind of shameless uh, pitch. Well, more kind of shameless. Uh, not not really a pitch. It's, I'm not selling anything. It's a plug. Uh, so it's a side project uh, that we've been working on uh, at our company, and, and hopefully there, there are people interested in it because we're hiring. Um, so warning for the talk. Uh, my advice is is opinionated. It's fairly non-standard. Uh, if if you follow my advice, your mileage may vary. Okay, so <laughs> take. Take what I say with a pinch of salt. Uh, so first, what is data science? Um, there, there's a famous uh, or well-cited uh, Venn diagram uh, from Drew Conway uh, that it's the intersection of, of three kind of uh, pillars, right? It's hacking skills, math and statistics, and uh, substantive expertise or, or subject, uh, subject matter uh, expertise. Uh, and so the intersection of uh, any two of those, uh, and you don't get the full view of data science, uh, but when you intersect all three of them, uh, then uh, you get into the data science world. And it's, it's interesting that here it's not like computer science uh, uh, or, or developer skills, it's really hacking skills. So a lot of data scientists are like really just hacking at code, um, and, and not, not, in a, <laughs> not in a good way sometimes. Um, the other thing about data science is that if, if you have anything that is refers to itself as a science, it is not a true science. Right? So chemistry, biology, and, uh, and physics are true sciences. Data science is not a science. Computer science is not a science. Material science is not a science. Okay, so it, it's been a very good like branding uh, exercise for, for data science, that, that these people uh, existed for, for many, many years, uh, but in the last five or ten years, uh, they've, they've uh, created a, a nice little bubble that's, uh, that's expanded. Um, so some applications of data science. Um, how, how many people here work in e-commerce? Usually a few. Oh, not too many. Okay. Well, you're, you're all familiar with, with e-commerce, right? You're, you're consumers you're, yourselves. Uh, the type of data science problems that you encounter within uh, e-commerce uh, recommendation engines, so when you go to Amazon or Lazada and they say, you know, people who uh, browsed this item also looked at this, or who, people who purchased this item also uh, purchased this. Um, and a slightly different aspect of that is 
uh, trying to analyze uh, your customers' uh, decision journeys and try to nudge them to more, uh, to more frequent purchases and maybe higher value purchases. So uh, what, one example I've heard is uh, like with, with Redmart, uh, there are customers who will have fairly infrequent purchases and they are purchasing on Redmart because uh, for, for heavy items. Right? If you want to buy uh, a bag of rice or, or a 24 pack of beer, right? you don't want to carry it home yourself, you want that delivered to you. How can you convince those people to make more, let's say, weekly purchases uh, instead of just uh, the very uh, heavy items? Uh, an interesting application for web devs. Um, so uh, there's, uh, as, as I guess most of you are aware, JavaScript uh, bundles are getting larger and larger. Right? And if you don't uh, split that, then uh, the initial page lo load when somebody lands on your page can take a long time. Right? If you're on a mobile, uh, on a mobile network, right? if somebody has to wait you know, 30 seconds for, for the page to load before they even see anything or, or there's any kind of interaction, then a lot of people will just uh, uh, shut down your, uh, sh sh shut the web page and go somewhere else. And so uh, you can code split your JavaScript bundle in order to, um, in order to avoid that. Uh, and the question is, how do you decide uh, where you split uh, the, the bundle and what do you prefetch, right? So if you can, uh, if you're on page A, right, how do you know should you be prefetching page B or C uh, in anticipation of where the user is going next? Uh, one way you can analyze this is through uh, Google Analytics data, right? So you can get this kind of flow diagram where you start from the root of the page uh, and as you go towards uh, the right, right, users can either go to the videos page, the stories page, or the pics page of this fictitious website. And then from there, you know, there's some probability of, of users going to uh, other uh, pages on, on the site. So, so the uh, question is, uh, how do you decide what do you, what do you put together and what do you, uh, and what do you prefetch? Right, so in, in this case, it's kind of, it, it, it's, you know, uh, you, you, you can, see pretty easily, like you, you might want to just bundle the root and the videos page together, and then when they do land on the videos page, uh, since uh, the majority goes to the pics afterwards, then you just uh, prefetch the pics once they land on uh, the videos page. And somebody's put together a pretty cool uh, uh, library that, uh, package that will uh, actually do this for you, that will analyze your Google Analytics uh, data, uh, and then uh, and, and then split, do, do the code splitting for you. Uh, it's an alpha, I haven't tried it yet myself, but uh, you can, there's a nice, very nice uh, blog post about uh, the types of uh, considerations that went into uh, this, this library. Um, and then uh, there's a, uh, th so, so, the, so the previous examples are kind of uh, for more commercial uses. Uh, there is some interesting data science work that can be done for uh, things like sustainability and, and social responsibility. Uh, so uh, I, I work with a nonprofit uh, called DataKind. Uh, the idea is to bring uh, data scientists uh, to on a pro bono basis, so volunteering uh, for uh, social impact organizations. One of the projects we're working with is called, uh, or the organization is called uh, Pelagic Data Systems. Uh, they install GPS devices on small fishing boats. Uh, so they go into uh, usually very rural areas and uh, supply uh, fishing fleets with GPS devices and they can get uh, pings uh, up to once every uh, second. With that kind of data, that kind of resolution of data, they can see, uh, well, with, with it's a data science problem to see when are boats actually fishing, right? When, when are they going out to their fishing place? When are they actually fishing? And when are they coming back? Right? How, how do you classify uh, that kind of, uh, classify that data? Uh, and, and then once you classify that, then you can look at questions like, uh, what kind of, uh, is there any overfishing going on, right? Should, should there be 
a more distributed uh, pattern of, of fishing that the that that can be recommended to the uh, to the fishermen. Okay, and finally, just to like. So, so, so the, the company that I work with, it's a, it's a very small uh, consulting company. Uh, my, my partner here is uh, Eddie, and he, he's a, the software engineering guy. Uh, he keep, keeps me on the, <laughs> on the straight and narrow on, on that side. Um, we, we've been uh, working with uh, one of the world's largest uh, consumer electronics manufacturer, uh, and we're working with Southeast Asia and, and Oceania, and also the Mideast and North Africa regions. Um, and we're focusing on marketing. So uh, things like who, uh, who are the customers that are most likely to buy a uh, device within the next month, or a specific device? What, are the, what is the next device that they're like, likely to buy? Um, so that, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess through this uh, project, we've, we've uh, worked with a lot of other uh, data science uh, teams, right? So not actually with the client because they don't have their own, uh, they, they, they usually work with vendors, but you know, we're working with other vendors. So, so we've come, uh, encountered a lot of other uh, patterns of working. And uh, the, the kind of standard approach uh, that, that people take um, and may not be uh, very familiar to a, a, a non-data science or data engineering crowd, uh, is uh, using uh, what they call notebooks. And, and the most popular notebook now is uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Jupyter with a, with a Y. Um, and uh, the idea of this is it's, it's similar to a REPL, right? Uh, except that you have a, you preserve uh, what uh, it, uh, so this is a very small picture, but you have different cells uh, where you have uh, code that can be executed. Uh, the difference uh, with the REPL is that you can, if you're preserving those cells, that you can go back to that cell and execute it again. You can have presentational elements like a, a plot. Uh, and this has been a very uh, standard way for data science uh, people to work with, uh, work on uh, data. Um, so some of the issues. So so we, we we played around with this uh, for a, for a while. Some of the issues that we had with that uh, are that these notebooks, uh, the the actual like behind uh, the the nice interface, uh, it, these notebooks are defined as a JSON file, right? So JSON files are well. They, the the problem with them is that they don't show up very well in GitHub, right? So if you have an existing uh, if you have an existing uh, uh, notebook, right? In that's checked into GitHub. You change a few cells in that, right? It's kind of hard to see, like with the, with the Git diff, uh, what changed uh, uh, in in a certain commit. Um, it's hard to have modular code, uh, though that is getting better in a uh, in, in the beta. So it's called Jupyter Labs, I think. So, so there's a beta version uh, that that. Uh, makes it easier to call uh, external scripts uh, from your uh, from your notebook, and it's hard, or you're, you're not very incentivized to have uh, unit tests. Right. Um, okay, another uh, uh, another aspect of the standard approach to uh, data science teams uh, is that you you start with uh, data engineers. So data engineers engineer the data. So that means they, they clean it up, <laughs> they set up pipelines to transform uh, into a nice clean data set uh, that data scientists uh, can work on uh, to put into a model. Right? So some machine learning model, for example. And once, that, once the data scientist, usually working on a, on a notebook, um, uh, has a model, right? then it's thrown back to the data engineers who uh, productionize it. Right? They, they take that model and say, okay, now I have to put, uh, bring it to scale, uh, allow it to work on gigabytes of, of data, gigabytes or petabytes of data, uh, and or maybe like uh, have, have real time interactions uh, uh, from the model. Right? Um, and this is, uh, I guess, uh, pretty similar to uh, having like a sysadmin and a developer. 
right? So you have a lot of dependencies. So the data scientist is, is waiting for the data engineer. Uh, and then, uh, and if, if it's not done right, you know, you have people that aren't, uh, that, that, are, that aren't fully utilized uh, all the time. Um, and, you know, if there's any kind of miscommunication between the data scientist and the data engineer, then you have uh, frictions that way. Um, what we found is that it's, it's much more uh, uh, expedient uh, to have uh, th those people combined in one, right? So uh, machine learning libraries are becoming easier and easier to use at scale, right? All of these data computation engines like uh, Spark are becoming easier and easier to use. It shouldn't be that a data scientist uh, cannot code, right? A data scientist should code should code well and should be able to code uh, for production use. Um, and uh, another aspect of, uh, of a more developer-driven approach to uh, data science is, uh, is actually having unit tests. So all, all of the data science teams that, that we've worked with, it's, it's, uh, I don't think we've, we've uh, talked to a single one that actually wrote their own tests. Right? The road tests, so which, which is like for a developer community like this it should be shocking, <laughs> right? So you have uh, you have big pipelines, data pipelines that are uh, that are you know, processing a lot of data, uh, doing really complicated stuff, and, and it's very common not to have uh, not to have tests. Um, so yeah, I would encourage that. <laughs> um, so. To, to tie it into to this, um, uh, to, to, to the uh, uh, discussion I was, uh, I was just talking about. So, like, oh, uh, so, so uh, maybe to go back to this, a point that I kind of missed. So, so not only is it is it strange to have uh, uh, or rare to have data scientists write unit tests, it's also rare for for data scientists to use Git properly, right? So. Every data scientist or data engineer that I've talked to, like they, they know that they should, <laughs> but a lot of the teams will like have, you know, at the end of the project, a single commit to master, right? As the <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's good that we have these. Uh, so it's, it's, they're, they're learning well. But <laughs> yeah, that's that bad practice, <laughs> right? So, so single commit to to master, and then you know. Passwords, <laughs> credentials uh, thrown in there, but it, it's very common for that. So one thing is, like data science people should uh, use GitHub more, Get, use any kind of version control more for, for their code. Uh, moreover, it's strange that there is no good version control for data. Right. So GitHub has become the standard platform for collaborating on code. Right, but there is no standard. There is no standard platform for collaborating on uh, data. So there are many attempts at uh, data platform uh, collaborations, uh, data collaboration platforms. Um, and what? Well, uh, one question you might have is what? Why not use uh, GitHub for data collaboration? And at first uh, glance, you think, okay, well. This might be uh, this might be a viable way to go. Uh, so this is uh, a data set that we've had from our uh, our client work. Uh, so MCC MNC is the mobile country code, mobile network code. So if you're an app developer, you can you know, get this from uh, from your users uh, to see which which uh, operator uh, they're using. And and when you put it into when you put a CSV file into GitHub, it actually parses it correctly, right? You, you see it as, uh, it, it, looks like, uh, it looks like a table. Um, and so here we have like the, the, in the first column, the two letter country code, then the three letter country code, uh, then the MCC value, MNC value, and then the carrier, uh, carrier values. Um, one thing about this is that, let's say you decide, okay, actually I don't need the two letter country code anymore. Right, so I'm going to just delete that column. What will that look like in GitHub? Right? It means that every single line is changed. Right? It's not. Uh, it, it's first like space inefficient, but it's also it's not quite right. You're just deleting a column. You're not 
uh, table here. Well, it is deleting every, or change, making a change to every line, but it's it's different, right? So data diffs are not the same as code diffs, right? Uh, and in many cases, uh, data does need to be visualized uh, for anybody to get a sense of it. Right? With with code, it's slightly different. You can describe what code does. It's hard to describe what data is unless you can visualize that data. Uh, and the other thing is that GitHub is, is a, uh, a bit too, in, in our thinking, high a technical bar for people who work, for everybody who works with data. Right? There are, uh, there are a lot more people that work with data. Right? Many business users work with uh, data. So if you think of like HR data, finance data, uh, all of these types of data, um, and, and you have non-developers working on that. Uh, that is a hard, high bar to use GitHub uh, for uh, if that is to be the data collaboration platform. Uh, so some of the applications for uh, GitHub for data. Um, so within data journalism, that's uh, it's been growing around the world. Uh, it would be nice to have a, a kind of standard place where data journalists can store their data and uh, refer their readers to that data so that they can play with the data themselves. Uh, within the academic world, uh, in the last few years, there have been a lot of uh, cases in sociology research, uh, uh, psychology research, nutritional research, where there has been academic fraud because people are falsifying data. Right? They're falsifying data or they're cherry picking results from their data. They're, they're data mining uh, their, their, uh, their experimental results in order to kind of engineer uh, findings that are, that are more interesting. Uh, if there's a higher bar for reproducibility that academics need to show their data, then that should uh, that that should make uh, uh, academic fraud uh, less common. Uh, another thing is uh, crowdsourced data sets. Uh, so uh, uh, there are a lot of data sets that are I, I think important uh, to have, but are difficult to collect for individuals. So an example of this, so uh, Anne is from uh, Coding, Coding Girls, right? And so one thing that's important is uh, diversity in tech, right? One measure of diversity in, in tech is how many, uh, what is the diversity of uh, speakers within meetups, right? Uh, so you could compile a data set of this. So all of the junior dev meetups and all of the uh, Python uh, user group uh, meetups and data science SD meetups uh, and JavaScript uh, meetups and see you know have a have a table of speaker names uh, and if they're feel female or male right that'd be a lot of work to compile right but it's much easier if you have a way to collaborate on that kind of uh, data set and once you see that data right when, once you see well okay it is I don't know uh, twenty percent thirty percent uh, female then that really uh, you know, then you have to confront that reality. What what are we doing wrong that there is such a lack of diversity uh, in this uh, in, in this community? Or or maybe it's you know, or even uh, and then that's a uh, that's something that can be a learning. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll take questions, and we're, we're also hiring if, if you're interested. Thank you. 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 Thank you.